It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Nintendo GameCube. But I just wanted to talk about not the GameCube itself, but come here, the controller itself. Because I personally love the GameCube and the controller. Yeah, and the problem I'm having with the GameCube controllers here is that I want to have a WaveBird, and the WaveBird are absolutely nowhere to be found in good condition. So I came across this bad boy on AliExpress, and the question remains, is this thing worth our money? So in the past, I did review a couple of, let's say, fake WaveBird controllers or wireless editions, and I came across this one that was brand new, and I was more like, okay, we're going to give it another try. The thing I'm having normally with the controllers, when I'm having in a controller, well, sometimes the joystick feels slightly different or the controls are like really bad. Man, it's always like something with these fake controllers. But yeah, we need to find a solution in my opinion because there is absolutely no way to find a one-on-one -on -one perfect clone of a WaveBird controller. Because nothing beats the original controller, of course. So here we're going to get this piece of toilet paper like always. That shows like we can use this thing on a Wii and a GameCube, but take consideration only the first generation of the Wii have the option for the GameCube. They don't say that in the freaking manual. All right, so what are we going to get? So first of all, this is not a one-on-one clone. It looks kind of like a WaveBird controller. It's kind of clunky and it feels quite lightweighted. But how is the grip itself? So the grip itself is quite comfortable, but also very important, the smell test. Hmm, smells kind of nice and not chemical. So we're going to get here an analog stick, but the analog stick is way smaller than the original one. I will do a side-by-side -side comparison later on. The D-pad oh feels kind of clicky, like long travel. To be honest, it feels like really cheap. We're going to get an on and off switch over here. The C button. And when you're looking at the shape of the button, it's completely different. And again, you can already hear like the click, the cheap click. All right, so let's see, take a close look at the battery compartment. We're going to get two AA batteries that we're going to need. Here we're going to get the receiver itself. I can still remember like with the WaveBird, was it not like the case that we have it in the scrolling wheel, they can put it on what, which channel you want to use it. All right, so let's plug this bad boy in. I'm guessing you need to put it on the way around. Wink it as a brain fort. So, so you can see like there is enough plenty of room. I only have one of them, but I know like the problem with I'm having with these controllers and that is something you need to take consideration. You don't have like a way to adjust the channel itself. So it's going to be quite challenging if you want to use multiple wireless controllers. But let's do a side-to-side -side comparison with the original one. Okay guys, so let's take a close look at the controller and let's do a quick side-by-side. -side. So the first thing I'm noticing is like, of course, and that's more of the Captain Obvious. You can see like this joystick is very tiny compared with this big bad boy. I'm just going to be honest, when you're playing with this joystick, it's super convenient and it plays way, let's say, better sometimes to have like a bigger thumbstick than having this tiny thing. Okay, so another thing I'm already like finding quite weird. When you're looking at the shoulder buttons, they stick out, let's say, a little bit higher than the original one. But maybe this is more because the form factor is not exactly the same or the mold for the controller. So then we're going to get the connection button, turbo, clear, and everything else. But also what I'm noticing is that there's a very fun thing to show you. So when you're looking at the original, here you can see like we're having some, let's say, small differences with the A and B button. And we also have this with the wireless one. And you can see like the B button sticks out a little bit higher than the A. And I don't know if this is going to be like a positive thing, to be honest. But the touch itself is so big of a difference. We're going to get this really long travel, cheap click. But let's put some batteries in this bad boy. Let's connect it. Let's play some F-Zero GX. And let's see how it is. Because F-Zero GX, I can always dream this game. I played it a lot. And that is a game that I'm used to. So I will use it with a wireless control just to see how the connectivity is and how responsive it is. Okay, so with the other cheap GameCube controller, I had the issue that I couldn't like choose which controller to connect with what dongle. So basically, when you plug it in, you plug it in. And if it doesn't see the controller, you press the connection button over here. It starts to blink very fast. And then you connect with the button over here. That's the only thing that you need to do and everything will work just fine. And the really cool thing is if you just power off the system or you plug it in a different controller port, it will automatically recognize the controller. So when it comes to connectivity, I think that's pretty damn awesome. And not even forget 
the freaking turbo button. I love myself turbo buttons. Yeah, and also that works very well. Okay, so let's start the game with the original controller for the comparison. And again, I don't have a wave bird, so I cannot sadly like compare it with that. Maybe in the future I'll fix that issue. But for now, an original controller will do just fine. What I'm noticing with the Z-Rex, because this or F0 GX, this game is super fast, and we're having like a controller that doesn't work that well, especially when it comes to the analog stick. This game will be unplayable, or you need to get used to the controller. Okay, so the controller, I'm used to it. So let's take a close look at the wireless version. Okay, so the first issue that I'm already having is that I wanted to connect it with the dongle, plug it in, and just play. But somehow, I don't know what's going on, but the controller is not responsive. And that's kind of weird, so let's plug in back the original controller. And here you can see, it works just fine. So what we're going to do is going to reboot the full system, just to see what happens. Everything has been connected, LED indicates that it will, it's, it is connected, so it needs to be working, and somehow it doesn't. So in my opinion, that's a little bit of a bummer. That we're having this issue so let's reboot it again all right so i've reset the system itself and now it seems to be working so that already like a big bummer that we did not like doing quick swap of course normally you will not let's say like swap the controllers but if you want to plug in let's say in second player you will have this similar issue so in my opinion it's quite a bummer but okay that's what we're going to live with so let's boot up the game i'm really curious how this controller will respond I must say the B button is not bad positioned because it's a little bit higher. But you can feel that the controller doesn't play of course like the original one. When it comes to the analog stick I'm very surprised because it works very well. Oh crap. Same goes for the shoulder buttons, they work very well, very responsive. So pressing the Y button for the turbo boost feels kind of weird from... It feels kind of weird, like... More like this thing has a very long travel and feels more sturdy than the original button. It makes it, let's say, less convenient to press. So especially when you're having basically the Y button with the original controller. Let's plug this bad boy back in. I think especially because the buttons are a different shape, everything is in a slightly different position. But again, it may be me nitpicking about this controller. So let's go back. And I wouldn't be surprised that it doesn't work anymore. So let's try it again. See, here you can see it doesn't work. Yeah. But in overall, I must say that the controller itself doesn't play that really bad. Alright guys, so what do I think of this controller? I must say that the controller itself is not really bad. I have seen my share of shitty fake controllers. This one is just okay. The only setback I already mentioned a couple of times is that when you plug it out, you will have an issue and it will not work. So you need to reset the full freaking system. So that's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. And yeah, this is more like if you want to play together with a couple of friends, you need to reset your system every time. But like when it comes to connectivity, I think the S option works way better than the previous model I've reviewed. The form factor is nothing like the wave board. Wave board. <laughs> wave bird. Like the bird. The bird is the word. You know what I'm going to do with that. But no, I'm not going to do that. But the thing is like the controller itself, it's pretty damn awesome. Yeah, it's not the superb quality like Nintendo, but is there's nothing to buy? Maybe this can be a solution. Let me know in the comments. Did you ever like buy something like this? And what is your experience? Let me know in the comments. What well, I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit the little bell, become a wicked family, and we'll see you in the next video.